welcome to Our City News. I'm Stephanie Allison, and here are the top stories. Constructions on our city street continues as the DPW works hard to improve traffic flow. The film industry is taking off here in New England. Our own Glenn Fossa had a chance to sit down with a local filmmaker. And budget cuts have hit the United Neighbors of Fitchburg. The news comes just five days after Executive Director Joanna Dos Santos announces she was stepping down. All these stories and more right here on Our City News. And now, the latest news, sports, and weather with Stephanie Allison and the entire Our City News team. Budget cuts have hit the United Neighbors of Fitchburg. The community organization has announced it will take a strategic pause until July due to money troubles from decreased funding. The popular community center will shut its doors and lay off staff, leaving many children and teens without the much needed services the center provides. This news comes five days after Executive Director Joanna Dos Santos announced she was stepping down. She's been in the position for six years and has been at the center for 11. Four employees will be kept on to run the youth center until the end of the school year on June 23rd. In the press release, the organization cites the mortgages of its two buildings as part of its debt. The center served around 1,000 people with after-school programs and other community services. The center has been active in the community for almost 50 years. The Footsteps to Brilliance program kicked off yesterday with a gathering at Fitchburg High School. The program provides access to electronic devices and information to pre-K through third grade students. Uh, this has been a long time coming. Uh, it's taken about three years uh, to pull this together. Uh, it was something that began uh, from um, an opportunity I had to see uh, this in, in play come back and talk with uh, our own staff uh, in Fitchburg and, and Fitchburg State University and other partners. Uh, and finally, uh, we were able to cobble together uh, the funds to uh, sponsor it and also all of the energy behind it. I'm excited about rolling out this initiative of Fitchburg Flourishes, Together We Read. Reading and literacy is such an important part of the foundation of all of our kids' education. And Fitchburg is able to do that within our own schools. But the beauty of this initiative is that it's a rollout to all of our families and all of our young people to help them in working together to build literacy as the foundation for not only the schools in their lives, but for the whole city. This early childhood reading initiative here in Fitchburg represents the coming together of multiple entities to focus their resources on a specific focused problem. One of the things that we're constantly asking parents to do is to read to their children. And having a program like Footsteps to Brilliance in a mobile device really allows for parents to access anywhere. So they can be out in the community, doctor's office, and it's a great opportunity to access literature at any time, no matter where they are. We really want to value and honor their first language. I have to say, having observed um, our pre kers interacting with the program, um, really validates that this is a worthy investment. The most positive aspect of change has been probably the introduction of technology. It helps letter recognition, phonemic awareness, letter writing. So they're starting now to put their own thoughts on pages and see illustrations for it and be able to take those books home. And the online platform allows for any student, regardless of their disability, to access the program. Many of our kids come to us without prior knowledge. Their toolbox is not as full as we'd like it to be. And so at least if we're giving kids some stuff that they can put in their toolbox so that when they go to kindergarten, they can pull it out. I think the biggest perk to all of this is even though we are sponsoring it, it's paid for by the Fitchburg Public Schools, we are making this uh, product accessible to every resident in the city of Fitchburg. And I think that that's a model for collaboration and making literacy the work of the whole city.
Stephanie, we are right here at Fitchburg High School. Footsteps to Brilliance. This campaign, of course, is Fitchburg Flourishes, the Early Learning Literacy Summit. Many, many celebrities here with us today at Fitchburg High, and we're going to see more as Fitchburg, our city news continues. You know, it, it's just one more example, uh, Glenn, of, of uh, the innovation that happens in the Fitchburg Public Schools. As I mentioned when I, when I uh, said a few words, uh, this is an example of the administration, the school administration headed up by Superintendent Ravenel, and uh, the fact that they're always looking for new ways to make our kids succeed. And that's what this is a demonstration of, and we're, we couldn't be happier, and it, uh, uh, we're, we're hoping and we're planning on, on big things from this. I'm very proud to be superintendent here, and this uh, Fitchburg Flourishes initiative, uh, being partners with Footsteps to Brilliance, is just such a great way to take something that we've learned in, within the Fitchburg Public Schools and then figure out a way to broaden that and make that available to you know, really all of the young preschoolers and the young children uh, in the city of Fitchburg. According to officials, we are seeing a significant reduction in arrests and serious crimes here in our city. We talked to Police Chief Ernest Martineau to get the details on how this makes our city a safer place to live. To this, my crime analysis, Christy Andrews uh, Fisher, uh, is responsible for compiling our end, end of year report. And we started working on this back in January. Um, I just released a 44 page document that is available to the entire general population, if you visit our website, um, a couple years ago we started um, putting our annual report on our website to create an opportunity for everybody in the city to see exactly what's happening in the city. Um, you know, I just released this annual report this past week at the City Council and we were extremely um, impressed with where the numbers came in this year. Um, the reduction was right across the board. I, I outlined a couple of um, things that really stood out to me to the city council is um, specifically looking at violent crime within the city of Fitchburg. Violent crime is down almost 13 percent across the board. That's astonishing when you look at the numbers that, that we do here in the city. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk that uh, people feel that Fitchburg is an unsafe place. Uh, it's total opposite. Um, the numbers that we're producing, the, the data doesn't lie. Um, we are on a reduction here across the city that we've never seen during my tenure here, uh, being employed in the city for the past 30 years. Um, you know, I've compared these in the numbers to years past, and they're astonishing. It's the reductions are directly across the board. Um, for instance, burglaries, house burglaries. Um, we're at a 15-year low. Last year, there was uh, less than 200 reported burglaries across the city. Um, that's astonishing when you look at, at the sheer volume of calls that we respond to. Um, this report is full of some exceptional information, so I really uh, express to people to get out there, get on our website, take your time, look at the report. Um, you, I think you'll be astonished at what we're, what we're doing here in the city. Um, one thing that I'd like to just really express to you that jumped off the pages to me, and, and it may not jump off the pages to the average person, is look at the number of arrests we made in the city of Fitchburg. Historically, over the last five to ten years, we would average at anywhere between 1,200 and 1,500 arrests during any given year. This is the first time in my 30-plus years that we have been below 1,000 arrests. 
Um, you may ask, well, what does that mean? Are, are the cops doing less? No, they're not doing less. They're doing a lot more. Um, last year, we responded to almost 60,000 calls for service within the city. We make a considerable effort on training our police officers today. We're training them in fair and impartial policing. We're training them in procedural justice. We're training them in de-escalation techniques. What the arrest numbers are telling me is our training is paying off in dividends. We're looking for other alternatives than just arresting someone. Our officers are out there talking to people, interacting in a positive way, so that leads me to show that the arrest numbers are coming down. That's one of the statistics that just jumped off the page at me and something that I'm most proud of because we're approaching police work in a different manner today. We're, 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 we are truly working in some type of community engagement style of policing. So please take some time, visit our webpage. There's a lot of great information in here. Um, if anybody out there has any questions, my office is always available. Please feel free to call myself, one of my captains. If you have a, a question on some type of statistic in here, we'll be more than happy to uh, try to answer that question for you. According to the Telegram and Gazette, a lightning strike has been confirmed as the cause of a fire on Tuesday that destroyed a former inn at 30 Mountain Road in Princeton. The 23-room mansion, built in 1898 near the center of Princeton, was hit by lightning during a storm that blew in before dawn Tuesday. According to a news release Thursday from the Office of State Fire Marshal Peter J. Ostrowski, about 3 a.m. Tuesday, lightning hit a large tree next to a single-family home, traveled down a metal chain to a metal trellis to another metal chain to a wooden courtyard structure and then ignited the side of the house, the fire marshal's office said. The release said that the fire traveled unchecked through the wall to the roof and the building did not have sprinklers. Firefighters from several communities battled the blaze and were hampered by lack of nearby water source. In the news release, the fire marshal said, report any potential lightning strikes to the fire department right away, even if you see no evidence of fire. One could be smoldering inside the walls or the attic for a long time. This is the perfect use of thermal imaging technology to detect smoldering fires before they cause a lot of damage. No one was injured in this fire that caused extensive damage to the building, formerly the Princess Princeton Inn. A decision on whether the building will be torn down is pending an evaluation by the owner's insurance company, according to the Princeton Building Department. Spring is here, and that means prom season has started. FHS Studios has all the information, as well as other events going on in the school. The Moroccan Desert. That's the theme for this year's prom. The prom is on Saturday, May 13th, and tickets are on sales. Purchase your ticket now. They are available at the entrance to the cafeteria during all lunches. Tickets are $65 and must be purchased and accompanied by either a junior or senior. Get your tickets early so that you can choose your seat and table. Got talent? Here's an announcement from our music department. Auditions for the talent show will be Thursday, May 4th after school. Any and all talent is welcome. Sign up for a time slot with Miss Greenlist anytime this week and next. First come, first serve. The talent show will be Tuesday, May 9th at 7 p.m. Tickets are $3 at the door. The music department spring concert will be Thursday, May 11th at 7 p.m. Come and support your award-winning band and chorus for with a free evening of music. This is also a Class Cup event. That's all we have for today. Tonight, May 5th at the British American Club from 6 to 11 p.m., Comics for a Cure is hosting an event to support, to support the Avon Walk for Breast Cancer. This event is for two local ladies, Cindy Soto and Crystal Lee, walking in memory of their mother. The comedians include Paul Durant, Dennis Wirth, and Bob Sheehy, and Jerry Caruso. Enjoy a night of fun, games, and laughs for a great cause.
rock and some people roll Some will make you giggle right down to your soul So talk to the world and introduce them to you And look at me now, I'm all Barbara and you You gotta take a step inside the shoes of another Get to know your neighbor, get to know one another So talk to the world and introduce them to you And look at me now, I'm all Barbara and you Work here in Fitchburg is in full swing as the construction for the roundabout at Rollstone and Electric Ave has started on the 1st. All of the businesses in and around the Park Hill Plaza area are open through the construction, but the road is closed to traffic as the construction continues. This week's top picks for FATV. Sunday at 10 a.m., you're right to know. Monday at 6.30 a.m., Our City News. Stay tuned for more. Tuesday at 7 p.m., Barbara and you. Wednesday at 7 p.m., Inside Fitchburg. Thursday at 4 p.m., Weekly Wellness. And Saturday at 10 p.m., the Saturday Fright Special. Filmmaking isn't just for Hollywood anymore. Many filmmakers are coming to New England, and local filmmakers are utilizing the beautiful landscape we have around us. Our very own Glenn Fossa sat down with Jen Potts to talk about her new film. And Stephanie, for this sit-down Our City moment here, right here, the Our City news show, Fitchburg Access Television, with me, Jenna Potts. Jenna, of course, is uh, mom to Jessa Potts, who has appeared here on uh, FATV's shows before. Uh, extremely talented family, and we're talking about the extraordinary world of Cecily Blinkstop. Incredible name for a movie that uh, is coming uh, soon to yes, us. Thank Tell you. us more about it. Yeah, so it's, um, it's actually, I wrote it as a feature film, and um, I, we are shooting the short film version, which is basically the first 14 pages. To, as proof of concept to raise money for the feature film. It's about a seven-year-old girl named Cecily Blinkstop, who, after the death of her baby sister, lives in a world with no color and no music, no laughter, no love. Her family has essentially just shut down. And so she wakes up one morning, and lying right next to her is a little girl about the same age as her. And with the help of this little girl, Cecily uh, sets out to bring her family back to life. Very interesting. And of course, I think one of the things that I picked up on uh, looking at some of the research uh, on the film is 1974, 1974, rural New England, which is a special yes. kind of a setting. Tell us more yeah, about how you yeah. chose that, maybe. Well, I actually, I shouldn't, I shouldn't admit this, I actually wrote it originally in rural Pennsylvania. Because <laughs> when I was a little girl, um, around 1974, we used to drive through rural Pennsylvania, and I always felt it was like this strange world and I, a world that I, I felt was lonely. And so when I was writing the story, it seemed the right place, but I want to shoot it in New England. I'm a New England girl, so sure. I am now anyway. I'm not actually originally. Right. Um, so I changed it to New England. 1974 is, you know, my, is, that's my era. That mm -hmm. I grew up in that time. Um, Cecily Blinkstop is very much a piece of me. I had an imaginary friend as a little girl. There's a lot of things about the story I didn't realize until after I wrote it are very much my life. Um, but it's kind of exciting to put together 1974. We're shooting it in my home, the interiors in Fitchburg, which Very is nice. built in 1880, so we can get away with a lot. Um, but yes, we are out buying plaid couches and, and yeah. strange looking curtains and, and wallpapers. And maybe eventually a Ford Pinto or two. And maybe yeah. eventually yeah. a Ford, or I think a Ford Squire wagon <laughs> we're going to go for. Okay, with the wood on the side. Yeah, with the wood. <laughs> so in, in terms of making a movie, obviously, with an imaginary friend, that's got to give you some certain creative challenges that have to be unique to someone yeah. who is not brand new at making movies, by the way. Right. This is my, um, I'm actually a theater director originally. Mm -hmm. I founded Cornerstone Performing Arts. Center Very here nice. in Fitchburg years ago and um, went back to school at 40 to study film at Fitchburg State mm -hmm. and they got my master's in screenwriting. Um, so yeah, this is my fourth short film. It will be my first feature film. Um, so the question. Yeah, so, <laughs> well, so in terms of uh, the credits coming, you know, from this and the creativity behind it, 
um, the imaginary friend. Oh, yes. uh, I just I'm really enamored by the concept and so tell me more about you know how how you creatively put that into uh, right. film. Yeah. Well there is a there's I had to create rules to the world. Mm -hmm. So you know what are the rules around the imaginary friend? When can we see her? was one of the rules. And so my cinematographer and I have had deep discussions about um, through whose perspective. So when it is Cecily's point of view, uh, we can always see Amanda Jane. But if anybody else is in the room, we don't see Cecily's point of view, we don't see Amanda Jane, but we see other things sure. that, sus that as audience members are going to make us question whether or not she's real or in Cecily's imagination, because she brings a light with her that changes the whole dynamic of a space when she's in a space. Yeah. So we're playing with that concept. But yes, nobody else can see her, Sure. Um, essentially. And so we have to um, set rules around how we film this. We actually have two scenes that are going to be shot with Steadicam. We have this amazing Steadicam op that's coming out from Boston. Um, and we have to choreograph those ahead of time it's Cecily, Amanda Jane, her imaginary friend, and her baby brother, Barney, in both of these scenes. And we have to choreograph it so that those rules apply and we can get the whole shot in one shot <laughs> yeah. using Steadicam. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's got some challenges, fun challenges, though. I know that, you know, our audience is broad and wide, and of course we have a lot of young people that even come here to Fitchburg Access Television to make film. Right. And so a lot of these concepts that you're rolling out today, they want to hear from the experienced folks. So looking forward to, you know, set design, uh, as you say, you're rolling it out with a lot of plaid couches and things of the 70s. What kind of challenges did you see uh, in sense of what technology may have been available then and sort of what we're expecting to see from a film set in the 70s? Right. Um, well, we, you mean as far as how we're shooting it or yeah. as far as the production design is concerned? As far as concerned. all of the concepts that you had to put together, right. the challenge. Well, yeah. we have, a, you know, two different things. One is obviously how we shoot it. We were going to shoot on film, but we have five children on set. And that is a huge <laughs> undertaking. They can only be on set for so many hours. Um, so that really has to be our focus. And when you're shooting on film, film becomes your your main focus the whole time you're shooting because you don't see the film until it comes back from the lab. So um, we decided that we're going to shoot, we're actually shooting on a camera called an RE Alexa. It's a really Very nice. hot yes. camera. Yeah. Um, and um, we are using filters that give us the feel of the 70s film sure. quality. So yeah. that's that side of things. As far as production design is concerned, I had to make some changes to the script. It is a short film. I don't. We our budget is already twenty five thousand dollars. I pay all of my cast and all of my crew, which is very rare in this area. Sure. But um, I had to eliminate things like a kitchen, for very obvious reasons. A nineteen seventies kitchen in the feature film will happen. In the short film, is not going to happen. Some orange formica. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge <laughs> undertaking. You almost really don't want to work in a kitchen. You want to work in a space that is not a designated kitchen mm -hmm. and add those appliances. Um, there's actually a great um, prop house down in Worcester that carries 1970s appliances, yeah. so they'll be hearing from me during the feature. But So I had to change some spaces around. I got rid of some cars, as mm -hmm. we had talked about, that are not necessary for the short are necessary for the feature. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, some of that. But the fun part is things like wallpaper, finding 1970s Mary Janes and little dresses. And very we're nice having, thing. you know, it's a blast. I'm very particular about production design. And so. of course you have experience. <laughs> you had a movie uh, called Charlie and Poppy, a short. Right. Uh, and uh, folks can actually see that. Yeah, uh, well, sort of. Yeah. Um, right now it's, it's um, going to be hitting its 16th film festival this summer mm -hmm. up in New York and then it will be released publicly as long as it doesn't get in anywhere else. I think there's still a couple out there. Um, so it's not really available to watch yet, but it's, it'll be there soon. Yeah, there's um, a trailer I know that there we is, know. There's, yeah. A, yeah, there's a clip, I think you have a right. clip, so that's, right. um, that's going around and, and you know, if you are really nice and contribute money to the Cecily Blinkstop campaign, 
you can get a copy of that right. link. <laughs> so without a call to action, because we are a nonprofit uh, television station, Access TV, um, tell us a little bit more about, you know, working to get angels. I, I myself have done some executive producing, so I do understand the, uh, the budgets and how quickly they can go. Right. Um, and folks can be part of this new endeavor. They can. So we, it, because it's a short film, um, we crowdfund this, which is different from a feature film, which is equity uh, investment. Mm -hmm. However, we have two executive producers that have come on board, and we are looking for more executive producers. And they come on um, contributing 10% of the total amount of the budget, and that contribution gets rolled into an equity investment into the feature film, mm -hmm. so that they do have an opportunity down the line to be equity investors based on the amount of money they put into the short, because we need to make the short in order to make the feature. Certainly. Um, so there's that, and then crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is really about supporting, having community support. You know, I, I, I posted something on our Facebook page. We have 2,200 followers uh, on the Cecily Blankstop mm -hmm. Facebook page. I'm a big marketer, so I've been working on this for a year. And, um, you know, I posted that if everybody on our, fa our page gave $5, we would we would hit our goal right mm -hmm. now. We're about halfway to our yeah. goal. So those are realistic. Um, those are realistic components right. of someone who's interested in making film. Someone who's interested in doing these kinds of projects. It's not easy, but it's not impossible. And um, so this has been, you know, just a, a great thrill to have you along on, on this. Uh, show here, our, our city sit-down segment. Um, of course, your daughter would delighted to always have her along when she plays, uh, certainly comes along during the uh, holiday season and, and uh, always uh, has a yes, great audience listen. following. So it is the extraordinary world of Cecily Blinkstop. Good job. And the movie is uh, by Jenna Potts. Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer Potts. And uh, my era for the Jessa. It's Jessica okay, it's the Jessa. It yeah. is. It's the Jessa. I in, get it. In you and in <laughs> us. And uh, so we're just thrilled to have you. Uh, so, timeline when do we expect to see more uh, for the extraordinary world of okay. Cecily? Yeah, we, we will be finished um, fundraising June 1st. We go right into heavy pre production at that point, getting the sets ready, which are both in Fitchburg exteriors and interiors. We're shooting up on Alpine Road. And um, we will be shooting the end of July, actually mid-July, it's 14th to 18th here in Fitchburg. And we should have a final cut. My goal, to, everything goes well by October 1st. Yeah. And of course, it has a Fitchburg connection, and that's who we are. Fitchburg Access Television, Our City News. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Cecily Blinkstop. She was seven years old. Cecily lived in a world with no music, no color, no laughter, no love. Her baby sister died, and her whole family is sad. Her mother doesn't want to live anymore. Her younger brother stopped talking. Her older sister is mad at everybody. And her dad, well, he's just trying to keep it together. Cecily feels sad and lonely. She wished that she could find a way to make her family alive again. She woke up one morning, and lying right next to her was Amanda Jane, a little girl about her age. No one could see Amanda Jane except Cecily. Cecily and Amanda Jane set out on a quest to save Cecily's family from their sadness. Thank you for watching Our City News. If you have a story you'd like to see covered, send us an email at rcitynewsfitchburg at gmail.com or reach out to us on Facebook. From the FATV studios, I'm Stephanie Allison, and thanks for watching.